If there's one body part on your physique that you absolutely do not want to neglect, that is for sure shoulders. A big chest looks great from the front, wide lats look great from the back, and any real bodybuilder that's aware of his own strengths and weaknesses, he'll generally have the ability and skill to showcase those strengths that hide his weaknesses. But delts, you can see them from every angle and every pose. And even more so, lack of shoulder development is just something you cannot hide. No matter what angle or pose a competitive bodybuilder is showcasing his physique in, he cannot hide his delts. And even if you just want to look bigger or more muscular in general, no matter how impressive the rest of your body is, if you're walking around with lagging delts, your physique is just going to suffer as a whole. Bottom line, don't neglect the delts, but more importantly, don't train them incorrectly to where they actually become a lagging muscle group in general. But if you are doing this right now, that's okay. I'm going to break down how to fix this issue for you right now. Personally, I am someone who's guilty of poor training technique for the shoulders early on in my training career. <laughs> oh, Carlos is blind. Embarrassing. <laughs> when I first started training, there was this bodybuilding dogma for a very long time. And that was that there was one key movement that was superior to any other shoulder building exercise. That specific exercise was the standing overhead barbell press. And if you followed any training methods from the early 2000s up to the early 2010s, you were probably dedicating about 85% of your shoulder training to the overhead press. And you were making up that other 15% with some lateral raises and possibly some rear delts. The idea was big overhead press, big shoulders. And although I got caught up in this idea for a long time myself, there was always something about this idea that I just knew didn't make sense. While the overhead press is a big compound lift, well suited for long-term progression, it might sound like it's right up my alley, as most of my training is centered around these basic principles. While the standing overhead press is a great movement for developing strength and muscle across the entire body, it's unfortunately really not specific to any one muscle group at all. Shoulders are obviously trained here, but being that the overhead press is a vertical pressing movement, the majority of the work that gets hit on the shoulders is in fact going to the front delts. And because you're standing during this lift, you're also going to engage the core, the upper back, the lower back, and even the glutes, the hips, and the legs. In my opinion, the standing overhead press is more of a full body movement than a shoulder builder. Don't get me wrong, it's a great movement for the front delts. But if you're already training chest and you're hitting a lot of incline presses, you might not even need front delt specific work. Every time you're in the gym benching, every time you're in the gym flat pressing, every time you're doing your incline presses, every time you're doing your dips, you're hammering your front delts every single time. And if you're doing that, and now you're gonna dedicate the majority of your shoulder training to now grabbing a barbell and pressing it overhead, that's completely overkill for most people. And even worse, the side and the rear delts, they're getting minimal activation here. And those side and rear delts specifically are mostly responsible for that wide and round appearance of the shoulders. If you ever see someone who has those really wide, round and capped delts, the front delts are actually contributing very little to that appearance. Those side and rear delts, that's what's giving it that full round look. And because the side delts are really not trained directly in any other lift, it really makes sense to dedicate the majority of your shoulder training to those side delts. And once I understood this concept, I revamped my entire shoulder training to work on this. And for me personally, based on my needs, my shoulder training then included a lot more side delt lateral raises and more rear delt work. But don't get me wrong here. I'm not saying never overhead press. It's a great foundational strength movement, and it's responsible for a lot of the growth of my physique early on. But what it's not responsible for is bringing up my lagging side and rear delts. To this day, I still consider my shoulder development a work in progress. My arms had a lot of time dedicated to proper training to go light years ahead of my shoulder development. And as a result, over the years, I've had to play catch up for my shoulders and my back to catch up to my arms. But there are a few things that I've done over the last few years that really helped bring my shoulders up to speed here. One, I started doing a lot more shoulder training where I trained each head of the delt individually rather than doing something like having a dedicated shoulder day. That means I sprinkled in a lot more volume for side delts after training let's say chest. I hammered the rear delts after finishing back work in the gym. Instead of dedicating an entire day training shoulders, I took advantage of actually hitting shoulders as frequently as possible by basically racking up as much volume every time I'm in the gym that they can tolerate, mostly in the form of lateral raise variations. The good thing is the side and the rear delts, they don't accumulate that much fatigue. And most of the training that's going to work them directly is in fact isolation movements. And those can pretty much be done at any session at any time in the gym. In addition to this, I also pulled back on some of my overhead pressing. 
In the last few years, I've commonly only included about one exercise directly for front delts and overhead press work. My personal preference has always been a more stable movement here, one that doesn't require the entire body to be stable like the standing overhead press. For me, that's always been the seated dumbbell press or the high incline barbell press. But more recently, I actually pulled back my overhead pressing even more, and I completely pulled any overhead pressing out of my training. And these last 12 weeks specifically, I've done no front delt work and no overhead press work at all. But keep in mind, I'm hammering incline presses on chest day. I'm doing pressing movements multiple times per week. So I'm definitely still training those front delts hard. But then after that, for shoulders, it's all lateral raise variations and rear delt work. And if you're currently lacking in your shoulder development, you probably want to make those side and rear delts a priority. And if I were to kind of break down shoulder training progression over time, taking someone, let's say, a day one of lifting all the way to the advanced stages, it probably looks something like this. Phase one, build the foundational strength and size to the entire physique. In that case, the base of your shoulder training should be on overhead presses, barbell presses, and dumbbell presses. And in addition to this, the side delts and rear delts should be trained with an equal amount of volume here. And after you've built some good strength and mass following this, you're ready for phase two. That would include more focus on the side and the rear delts, and actually scaling back on that overhead pressing. Not that overhead presses are gonna be useless at this stage, but you have to keep in mind that you're taking away valuable time in the gym, you're tapping into your limited recovery ability, and you're taking those resources away from shoulder work that might be more of a priority at this time. In phase three, that's when you're in the advanced stages, and your shoulder training at this point should be completely overhauled to fit your specific needs. If you're lacking rear delts, that might be your main priority at this time, and as a result, your training should reflect it. If at this stage you have no need to include additional overhead press work, then you should just cut them out of your routine. The key here is being aware of what stage you're at currently. If you're still a newbie, don't go right for the advanced training. But let's say that you have been training for a while and you're at the intermediate or even the advanced stages. Don't think that the training style that got you from no progress to decent progress is gonna be the same thing that takes you from decent progress to advanced stages. And that's ultimately what bodybuilding is all about, being hyper aware of what your physique currently needs at this time, and focusing on the training methods and nutrition methods that will improve those needs. And in addition, don't be afraid to cut out what's not working. And more importantly, double down on what's bringing you the best results. And if you want the the exact training programs that I personally recommend to build more muscle using proven old school bodybuilding methods. All my old school mass game programs are down below. And as always, if you want to see more of the best original bodybuilding content just like this, make sure to hit subscribe.